Listen now to the Pacific Story. And be tuned to 660 30 minutes from now for the Midnight News, brought to you each evening at 12. WEAF, NBC in New York. The National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated stations present the Pacific Story. This is the story of the Pacific, the drama of the millions of people who live around this greatest sea, where the United States is now committed to a long-term policy of keeping the peace. This is the background story of the events in the Pacific, and their meaning to us and to the generations to come. Sarawak, adventure in statehood. The drums in the jungle. It is but two hours since the wireless brought the message, and already tribal drums echo it to every corner of Sarawak. The great white father returns to his people. The Japanese are gone from our land, and the white Raja comes soon again to Kuching. This is a Sarawak mother, one of the Diaks whose tribesmen have inhabited this strange kingdom on the west coast of Borneo, as far back as their ancestors could remember. But tonight we are alone, my son. There is neither Japanese nor white Raja in the palace. And the voices of the night beetle and the bullfrog are heard only by Diaks like ourselves and Malay and Cayenne. Tonight the heart of our people beats as it did in the days before the first white Raja came to the shores of Sarawak. That was over a hundred years ago. In the days of my illustrious grandmother, who stood as a girl on this same beach as her people watched the strange foreign boat draw near. This was the schooner royalist of Singapore. My grandmother ran to the edge of the shore. Look, she cried, these men, none who have ever come to Sarawak. You are right, Tena. Their faces are pale. Can it be that they are painted for war, my prince? No, Tena. There is laughter in their countenance. These men come as friends. Help them with the boat, men of Putin. These are friends to Sarawak. Okay, Mother. It is a rash thing to welcome strangers of whom nothing is known. But did you not hear Pangara and Mkota? Mother Hashim has said they come in peace. I heard, Tanner. Do not forget that I am governor to Sarawak. Patient, Pangaran Makota. We do not forget that you are governor, but do not you forget that I am Raja Muda. Where is he go? He will be a blasted lady. Here he go, I say. No further words, Makota. A smile welcome lest they take offense. Get your blooming paws off me, a branchin, will he? How vicious he did, Mr. Brook. Give me the word. I'll cut him to ribbon. Give me the word, Mr. Pooh. Uh, uh, hold on, Billy boy. They mean no harm. They're just trying to help you out of the boat. Oh, look at him, boys. His first boss in Singapore. Uh, trying to me. That's what they did. Which did this skin? Let me get my son. What strange tongue is this, Muda Hasim? They speak a language we have never heard. Their leader is one who laughs. We need not fear. Don't pull my clothes off, Mr. Brooks. I don't trust these cannibals. He just wants to see if you're white all over, Billy Boy. Well, he is, then. I'll just tell up his tent leg. Let him look and have his gun with it. <laughs> all right. All right. Enough now. Which one of you is chief? Chief. Head man. Can't you understand? Which one of you is chief? The blonde is just looking at him like you was bombing. Uh, where's the melee? Perhaps he can make them understand. Here, you, in Caprica. Can't you see the skip in these yet? I am here, Swan. No gin is ready. Up to it, then, now, gin. Ask them which one is their leader. Oh, my yes, so Captain. Which among you is chief? The white master would know. I am the Raja Muda. This one, Swan, is the prince of Sarawak. Tell him I am James Brooke, master of the ship that is anchored in his harbor. Tell him I have heard that there is war among his tribes and that I have come from far across the sea to offer my assistance. Kosuta Ininga, 
the great white master comes to bring help in conquering those who are disloyal to Raja Muda. I have warned you, Muda Hassan. The stranger means harm to Sarawak. Send him from our shores before it's too late. You are too anxious, Makota. One would think you are in league with the uprisers. Tell the white twan he's welcome and that we will speak further in the council hall of the village. This was how they came, my son. The first white men to set foot on Sarawak. In a great ship from across the sea. From Malaya, as a matter of fact. Something like 475 miles across the South China Sea. James Brooke had heard rumors in Singapore of a Borneo uprising that a certain prince of Sarawak was helpless. We are alone here, White Swan, and the truth may be spoken. The plight of Sarawak is desperate, and even I, the prince, am powerless. It is my governor, Makota. He is evil, and he would stir the tribes against me. I am in need of your help, White Swan. Raja Muda say Makota make much trouble. He won't you stay. He is that, Skipper. The blooming prince is afraid. Tell him I will put down the rebellion and protect him from Makota. That I must be made leader in his place. Tell him those are my only terms. If he doesn't agree, we leave at once and he can help himself. Tinkana Raja Muda. Kasi dalaranting godoy. Te kupa. He will be my last. Makota. Te kupa. Do not go, Tuan. I will give you... Even my country, my government, and my trade. All this I will give to you and your generations after you if you do not desert me. Now, in my hour of need, you will even be Raja of Sarawak. And in this way, my son, the first white Raja came to rule over our people. And he learned our language and the customs of our people and made peace among the tribes, punishing the wrongdoers. And even as a father, he taught many things to the people of Sarawak. The hills were rich in minerals, especially gold, which the Chinese miners who had come to Sarawak before James Brooks had built into quite a profitable industry. The white Raja became a friend to the sea, Giyak. And through him, much that was evil was destroyed. And what brought harm to the men and women of the tribes was forbidden. Before then, when a new house was built for the chief, a post was driven through the body of a young maiden in order that good fortune would prevail in the house. But the first white Raja stopped this. This barbarous practice must stop at once. Seem. You will instruct your chief that the spirits will not accept so cruel a sacrifice. It is wrong, and it is forbidden. Your wisdom is great, white one, and ours not to question. You know, Skipper, sometimes I don't know whether to take these boats for fiends or just children as don't know no better. Well, it will take time, Bill, but we will put an end to these savageries. Little by little, we will teach them. We'll get them to understand law and order and a government they can rely on. My son, the first white Raja did much to correct the ways of the tribe. And the DX began to look on him as more than mortal. As one perhaps sent by some favorable spirit. And on the evenings when he sat among them, they would sing incantations to his valor. You are the long sword. Sweeping off the long sheaf, the bong pan. You are the comb of the champion fighting cock that never runs away. You are the wall tied of closely. You are the tiger from the summit of Talong with a throat encircled with blood. <laughs> But all did not love the white Raja, my son. There was Makota, whom some called the evil one. 
And there were Chinese traders and miners. And there were Diak rebels and pirates. Far away in England, they talked of all the battles fought here. What right is James Brooks to interfere with the affairs of Sarawak? To answer this question, the White Raja went back to England, to the beautiful court of Queen Victoria. The Queen asked him how he controlled all of our people whom he knew so little. I find it easier to govern 30,000 Malays and Diaks than to manage a dozen of your Majesty's politicians. Sarawak must be a strange and fascinating land. It's a beautiful land, Your Majesty. As you know, it's situated on the northwest coast of the island of Borneo. Must be very near the equator. Uh, directly, Mum. With the climate, it will grow anything. The interior is hilly and covered with tropical jungle, accessible only by way of the many rivers. The land is rich, Mum, and the natural resources is yet untouched. Forests full of lumber, gold, silver, diamonds in the hills. And in the jungle, cane, rattan, sago, pepper. And all this is yours, James Brooks? Belongs to Sarawak. By what right do you call yourself Raja Sarawak? By right of transfer, ma'am. By right of this document, which I beg of your majesty to read. Transfer of the government of Sarawak. This agreement made me a uh, Ah, here it is. But with a pure heart and high integrity, Pangaran Muda Hassim, son of the late Sultan Muhammad, hereby transfers to James Brooke, Esquire the government of Sarawak, together with the dependencies thereof, revenue, and all its future responsibilities. Interesting, Arthur. Most interesting. And uh, what in turn did Sarawak receive for its uh, dependencies and uh, revenue thereof? Law and order, Mum, and a civilized government. Good. Who rules Sarawak is no concern of England, but Sarawak looks across the sea to Singapore, Guardian of our lifeline to the east. It is good to know, Roger, that its government is friendly to our own. Your Majesty, I am Roger of Sarawak. But first, I am a subject of Great Britain. You see, Skipper, this is the sort of thing I meant. The good thing you're back. They've been acting up this way all over the country. It's that in the counter, and them Chinese is his back in it, and I make no bones about it either. Silence! Hold your tongue! You, Tian Li, what is the grievance of your Chinese? The Raja of Sak to bring hardship to our trade. He's an injustice to my Chinese brother. We explore the jungle and develop mines, and now we are forced to pay tax. The tax is necessary. You Chinese control all the trade in Sarawak. That is good. But you cannot continue to exploit the natural resources of the country without having to pay for the improvements. The rubber and the gold and the spaces that are taken from the Diox will continue to be taxed. But we are taxed also on what is imported, our machinery and rice, which we must bring from abroad to feed the mine workers. You must understand that things are no longer as they were. The government has come to Sarawak. The taxes will remain. And you, Dakota, what have you to say? Chiefs of the tribe do not approve of the changes, Swan. The well, changes are for their own good. What else? You are a bachelor, Swan. Who would rule after you? Tell the chiefs that those of my blood will rule. My nephew Charles has been chosen. But Mother Hassam has not the right to give over the rule of his people. Who says this, Makoto? The chiefs or yourself? It is the speaking of the chief, Swan, and the Sultan of Brunei. Then tell them this. And listen, all of you. Do you see this ribbon which I wear? It is the Order of the Bath. It is a great honor and was placed on your Roger by the queen of the most powerful nation in the world. A nation with many ships and many guns. The English queen recognizes the lawful right of your Roger to rule. If trouble came to Sarawak, her ships and her guns would come to his aid. Remember this, all of you. Now go. Get out. I don't like it, Skipper. They mean trouble. I'm getting pretty tired of all this wrangling and unrest. It's that Makauta. There's no difference than it's always been. But I am, Bill. I'm getting old. And I think I'm getting sick. You what? Here. Let me feel your head. Wow, you're burning up. And, and those marks on your skin. Oh, you don't think it's... It's smallpox, Bill. That's sort of coming on. 
You'd better go up river in the morning and bring my nephew Charles to Kuching. <laughs> Then trouble came, my son. Makota, whom some called the evil one, and the Chinese traders plotted against the white Raja. They stirred up the tribes of the jungle and the gold workers. Six hundred of them, it is said. Makota led them down the river in many boats to set fire to the palace and to kill the white Raja. At midnight, they came down the river to Kuching. Bill, there's something on the river. Bill, where are you? There's something wrong out there. What's that noise, I say? And that light. Fire. Bill, Kuching is on fire. Skipper, it comes. They dared to do it. They dared to rebel against it's me. It's the Chinese, Skipper. And Macau's is rebels. They got guns. Hundreds of them. They came up the river from Pau. Ah! Bill. Bill, you're hurt. Oh. oh, I'm... I'm down, Skipper. What, never mind about me. What about you? The palace is surrounded. There's no way out. There's the river. Oh, their boats are all over the river. You wouldn't have a chance. And I'll swim underwater. But you're sick. Oh, you'll never make it. I'll make it. And I'll come back. And they'll wish they've never seen this night. <laughs> my son, with his knife held between his teeth. The white Raja swam beneath the river and returned to put down the rebellion. And he ruled in peace for many years. Watch what link character this James Brooke, the first. But Kuching was destroyed. All burned to the ground. And the beautiful Kuching, which you know, my child, was built in later years by the new Raja who came to the palace in my mother's time. Charles Anthony Johnston Brook, nephew of James and father of the present Raja, governed Sarawak from 1868 to 1917. The second Raja raised the great balustrade of stone upon the mud banks and laid out the lawn. And the fountain there, as you see it, the great road which winds through the marshes was built by him, and the pure white buildings which scatter through the city of Kuching. But though he brought much good to Sarawak and ruled for many years, strangely, the second Raja was not loved by the Diak as his uncle had been. No, 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 I will not permit these frivolities to take place in my kingdom. There must be an end to this nonsense once and for all. The Jacks must learn that life is a serious business, not just a matter of pleasure and irresponsibility. But the natives have always been permitted a festival whenever their chiefs proclaimed one. Have always been permitted. Hmm. You mean that in my uncle's time such nonsense was allowed? Well, I am not my uncle. But if I may remark, sir, your uncle was greatly loved by the natives. And I am not, you imply. Uh, Excellency, I only meant... What you meant is of no consequence. I know what they think mm-hmm. A cold, inhuman machine. Without love or warmth, even for his own family. Certainly not, sir. Oh, they're right. Those things are not important to me. Let them judge me by my work. Let them be my monuments in Sarawak. Oh, sir, I... Well, soon my son will be roused up. Perhaps he will be more like my uncle. But when he steps to the throne, he will find a far different Sarawak than I found 50 years ago. And when the third white Raja was installed at the palace in Kuching, our people were glad. For he was tall and fair, 
And his eyes smiled at his children. And he spoke to our hearts. This was 1918, when Brook ascended to the Rajah of Sarawak. I make known to you that as the white label and the Kundar fruit show white where they are split, so too is my heart unblemished towards you. My people, rich and poor, need never be afraid. If you are in trouble or have anything to complain of, I wish you all to tell me so that I can help you. Therefore, never be afraid to come to me. Ah, it's good to be alone, my dear. Facing a crowd seems such an ordeal for me. That's something you'll have to get used to, Varnum. For now, you're Roger, and wherever you go, there'll be great throngs of your subjects waiting to see you and hear you speak. You were splendid today. Mm-hmm. I could feel how much they love you. You are now there, twan, twan. <laughs> yes, but... I have no sooner installed than I have to go to country on an expedition. Is it trouble again with the tribes in the interior? No. This time it's a peacemaking. It is good. Now that you have settled this blood feud you recognize that all are of the same stock and have no further cause for dispute. I have spoken. Your Highness, my company is in a position to make a most handsome financial arrangement for Your Majesty's government concerning the rights to cut and export lumber. I'm aware of your proposal, Mr. Roberts, but unfortunately the forests in question have been declared a national reserve. But surely, Your Highness, there's lumber enough in the jungle to last through all our lifetimes. Our lifetimes are not enough, Mr. Roberts. The forests must be held in trust for the generations who come after us. I speak for the Chinese lumber plant of China. We welcome the opportunity to speak with one who represents uh, so large a portion of our population. We most respectfully question the restrictions recently placed on the production of rubber, sire. The new order provides for a smaller quota than ever before. Rumba has provided great revenue to government. For this reason, it has become necessary to conclude an international agreement in order to maintain the present high price of rubber. This cartel will be a lasting benefit to Sarawak. Through the years, my child, Sarawak grew in the eyes of the world. And Kuching became a model for all cities. And in the hundredth year after the first white Raja came, a great festival was proclaimed. And flags and banners flew in the wind. A hundred and one salutes I counted from the cannon in the harbor. And great men in splendid uniforms came from far across the sea to honor the Raja and the Rani. My loyal subjects, because of the extremely troubled times in which we now live, it has become desirable to Sarawak, in view of the military protection that would be afforded, that British participation in our affairs be increased. Henceforth, an administrative council of British officials will sit with our own... protection was a mite late. For on December 18, 1941, the Japanese landed. First at the Miri oil field, and then at the capital, Kuching. Unresisted by even so much as a British frigate. But the White Raja had managed to leave Sarawak, and now, with the war ended, and the Japanese expelled from his kingdom, the Raja met once more with British colonial officials, this time in London. Two months ago. Indeed, my dear Arthur, the Crown recognizes your rights in the kingdom. Is also aware of the strategic importance of sorrow to the Empire. For this reason, it is desirable that there should be an extension of authority, giving the resident British representative an effective voice in all substantial matters of policy and administration, 
and such jurisdiction as would enable him to legislate for Sarawak. In our opinion, the time has arrived when the territory itself should be ceded to His Majesty the King. You offer to cede Sarawak to the Empire, Roger? The responsibilities have become too great for an absolute government. Your Highness, the representatives of your people agree. I believe the other gentlemen and I may safely state that your proposal would be acceptable to His Majesty's government. So you see, my son, our country is to be part of the great empire of Britain, the land of our white rajas. And there is talk that much money, a million pounds, will be paid to the white raja to care for him and his family all their lives. When this word came out, my son, many people came to ask questions of the White Raja yeah, and no, Rani. No, no, no. Uh, Your Highness, my paper wants to know if the natives of Sarawak were properly consulted. Now, how about this million pound trust fund, Roger? Yeah, what about your nephew, the person there to the Gentlemen, phone? gentlemen, please, one at a time. Roger and I would be glad to answer your questions, but not quite so fast. Well, uh, from a woman's angle, Your Highness, uh, would you mind telling us the real reason for the session? The real reason? Why, of course, my daughter. That's really why. We've got three gorgeous daughters, thank God for them, but no son, though no heaven knows we prayed hard enough. <laughs> what about, uh, what about Parliament's demands that the Sarawak State Council pass on your right to the session, Roger? Oh, the council will agree because the change will benefit Sarawak. But darlings, don't they understand? The Sarawak people agree to anything the Roger wants. It's just a case of a few leading ones squatting on the veranda and saying, yes, Roger. Uh, is there any truth to the report that the Malay and Chinese communities threatened to rebel? None. There's peace in Sarawak, and uh, before the end of March, the Rani and I'll return there. Uh, in the meantime, I should like to read you an excerpt from a message uh, I'm going to send to my people. In Sarawak, all authority derives from the Raja. I am the spokesman of the people's will. No one of you will question what I do in his high interest. Your future happiness lies in another realm. There shall be no other Raja of Sarawak after me. The people of Sarawak will become subjects of the king. And this is for your good, my royal command. Yes, the white raja will come again to Kuching, my son. And when he has said farewell, new and different days will be ours. But you are part of the past, and you will remember all that I have told you, and all that I shall tell you all the days of my life. This you will never forget. And one day, perhaps when I am long since gone, it may be yours, my son, to see that Sarawak truly belongs to the people of Sarawak. To the Diaks and the Malay, the Kayans and the Moros, and to all the other tribes who dwell in our land. You have been listening to the Pacific Story, presented by the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations to clarify events in the Pacific and to make understandable the cross-currents of life in the Pacific Basin. For a reprint of this Pacific Story program, send 10 cents in stamped or coin to the University of California Press, Berkeley, California. May I repeat? For a reprint of this Pacific Story program, send 10 cents in stamps or coin to University of California Press, Berkeley, California. The Pacific Story is produced and directed by Arnold Marquis. The original musical score was composed and conducted by Thomas Peluso. The principal voice is that of Georgia Bacchus. Programs in this series of particular interest to servicemen and women are broadcast overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. 
This program has been heard in Canada through the facilities of the Canadian Broadcasting Company. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.